I think chronic, chronic and hidden infections really complicate a lot of SIBO cases. And I really think it's a very widespread problem where we can have hidden infections in chambers of the body, areas of the body that are hard to test and hard to find. So the sinuses would be one, and I want to explain that in a minute here. But other areas would be dental and like root canals. You know, that's not an easy thing. You can't stick a swab into somebody's root canal, you know, to test it, right? And, you know, vaginal, prostate, things like that. There was this interesting way that you phrased these pockets in the nasal cavity. I don't want to steal your thunder, but tell us about <laughs> this uh, this new clinical entity, if you will, and the approach that you're um, experimenting with. Well, I think I, to you, I called it SIBO of the nose. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, what happens with ongoing chronic infections is it'll come up to the surface and be like an acute infection at times, and then it'll go, go back down, but a person is still not functioning super well. I, I had suspected my husband had Honestly, I knew he had chronic sinus infections for years and years and years. And I was frustrated. I've swabbed his nose and everything and did did all that, done all the treatments, both orally, like internally, and nasal lavage, you know, antibacterials, et cetera. You know, I'm very well versed in all sorts of treatments for the nose now because of him. What I wanted was I wanted him to get a an image because I figured there was some sort of problem with the anatomy that was making it such that there was an obstruction where these infections couldn't drain. And that's why I refer to it as SIBO of the nose, because with SIBO, we sort of have two main physiologic in the body underlying causes of SIBO. One is deficient motility in the small intestine or the migrating motor complex. And the other would be partial obstruction. And there are a lot of cases like that that have some kind of partial obstruction. Adhesions are very common. Other things. And so um, if there's something blocking, you know, the drainage of where the infection is, then how could it get out? So finally, I, through a colleague, found an EENT that all her patients had been going to, who's very naturopathically oriented, natural oriented. And first thing he wanted to do was do an image. Previously, anyone I sent him to, any ENT I sent him to, wouldn't want to do an image because that's sort of the way a lot of allopathic medicine is. They're not unfortunately geared towards really looking for underlying causes and trying to dig out and investigate. So we did the CT and right away you could see the infection clearly in various sinus chambers. So what what this what this guy does is he goes in and corrects the anatomy. So we did it on my husband and then I went to him. And I had been suffering from chronic sinus infections too, not nearly as bad as my husband and for not as long. But uh, yeah, he found the same thing. So for instance, there can be structures in the nose, uh, turbinates um, and deviated septums that can come into this that can actually push against the openings of the sinuses like a, like a door, a piece of tissue and flesh that's like a door that can be closed over these sinus openings. So there, then there's a room with a closed door and it has an infection in it. In it. How is it going to drain? And if you were to swab the nose, which of course we had done, you wouldn't be able to reach into there to find it. So, you you know, how can you actually test for it? You, you really might need an image to see which sinus it's in. And so the amazing thing was that he, he goes through this procedure where it's like a minor surgery procedure where he can corrects deviated septum. He trims, um, trims swollen uh, inflamed turbinates so that they're a little bit more aerodynamic and not closing things off. He physically suctions out any infection he can see. Like when he moves tissues and now he, you know, because I, I watched the whole thing. It was fascinating. You know, you could see the white coating of infection and he just vacuums it out, suctions it out, right? And wow. does that he can reach. Of course, there's, there's infection in sinuses that his instruments can't reach. And he does other things like that. And then another thing he does is something that you very well may be familiar with, which is kind of like the nasal specific that chiropractors and naturopaths do. So funny. I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> which yeah. is, you know, it's, but it's different. So what we do is, is it's like a balloon that we inflate in the nose. And um, really my understanding from my teacher who trained me on it is the purpose is actually to adjust the bones in the face. But at the same time, it does also open the tissue structures. Well, this is actually much more specific then a nasal specific because it's a little balloon that's like half the size of the tip of your pinky. And it simply goes into the openings of the sinuses, which is different. We, we're not doing that with our nasal specifics. So they're called the ostea. So it goes into the little ostea and just 
you know, he inflates the balloon and the analogy is like, it's like a tin can and you know how you would crush a tin can and it stays like that or an aluminum can. This is the same. So when you, when you open, it will stay now dilated or open, allowing for better drainage. So that is what the minor uh, surgery procedure is. And, and, you know, what it's doing is just allowing infection to drain, I actually have a way out because we have those cilia that help if they're still working, that help move things. So I can report to you, my husband is two months out now on his, and it's been absolutely miraculous for him. His infection is gone. It takes some time to clear it. Um, and during that during that process, you can feel like you have an infection because it's coming out, right? Um, but it, he that's that's gone. He breathes better. He can taste better. He barely snores at all. Really, he doesn't need his CPAP anymore because he needed all that because he was all altered anatomy. Most amazing thing is he doesn't have knee pain anymore. So somehow that in inflammation, that, that chronic infection was causing body-wide inflammation, which was affecting his knees. And now he has no knee pain, which is extraordinary. And he's also cut down on caffeine. He doesn't, he's not tired, right? He's not tired anymore because he well, doesn't have anything better at night. Yeah, right? yeah, and yeah, and he doesn't have an infection. Those are two main drains to your and your also I forgot to say, yeah. he, his brain is. He says, "I feel like I have a new brain," which makes sense when you have an infection. <laughs> think, think about yeah. you know when if you're really sick, you know you, you all you want to do is lie down. And you can't think, right? And so yeah. he was performing. And they his call normal. they call it sickness behavior, right? When people have a low level infection, yep. it's sickness behavior where they're they're just depressed and they're tired, almost like you have the flu, except you may not have all the respiratory symptoms, right? right in some <laughs> cases. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. So I, so anyway, I encourage anyone, you know, who has chronic infections to try and find chronic sinus infections, to try and find a, a good ENT who can do this kind of a thing. So I'm in Portland, Oregon. So this is Dr. Doug Scarada and he's at the Modern Nose Clinic. These these Chronic hidden infections really can take a toll on people. And Dr. Scarata believes that it could be related to SIBO, that we've seen this with dental infections. Uh, SSL has a numerous case. SSL is my colleague, Dr. S Stephen Sandberg-Lewis. Numerous cases of uh, dental infections and abscesses that once cleared, then somebody's SIBO and all basically all their digestive symptoms completely resolve. There's definitely a subset for whom, whether it's the mouth or the nose, or maybe both, and just this excess of bacteria. And I would also argue fungus based upon this one study we found that was fascinating. It was only in one person, but they did serial stool candida testing on this person over a number of weeks, and they had them oscillate for two days. You brush your teeth just once per day, and then for two days, you brush after every meal. This led to a 10 to a 100-fold difference in the level of candida in the stool in which way so the way. more brushing gave less the more brushing decreased the amount of candida in the stool which okay. totally maps on to this finding that there can be something uh, seeding if you will from the oral cavity or the nasopharyngeal cavity downward into the si the li and then you know out in the poop. <laughs> Absolutely. That's fascinating. Um, I remember Dr. Sam Rabar, who came and spoke at many of our SIBO conferences, um, he talked about this too. He had a strong feeling that the nose was a reservoir seeding, seeding into the small intestine and creating chronic SIBO. It's it's one of his, uh, you know, check this box. Do they have a chronic sinus infection if they have chronic SIBO? So, you know, we've been hearing about this for a while. Well, Allison, it is always, always great catching up with you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, so good to be here. Thank you. <laughs>